<laughs> Depends how much of you are, Noah, and you'll speak. <laughs> <laughs> Right, welcome everybody. Um, oh. <laughs> so, well, look, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, uh, as I announced at the meetup uh, in December of this year, uh, we're going to be running uh, every couple of months. Um, so, uh, turn out's not quite as big as uh, this time, but there are going to be lots more events throughout the year, so lots of opportunities for people to come in, uh, particularly for new people to join the, uh, uh, join the community. So, uh, but yeah, thank you all for coming. Um, so this building here is, uh, is from Red Badger, and uh, Amy uh, has a few words to say from our sponsor. Um, hey, Amy, for Peter and Beatrice. <laughs> so, uh, um, I just wanted to say thank you for letting us host. Ah. And um, very quickly, we are hiring. Um, if you are a full stack developer with Node or Ruby, we'd really like to hear from you. Um, we have a great team, really nice work environment, a good benefits package. Um, I have to dash off. But Alex is one of our developers, and Zoe is here. Um, if you'd like to chat to us about um, the roles we have, please get in touch. Um, you can also email jobs at red Have a nice evening. Thank you. Very much. I should just, just point out I'm also hiring, and my, my, <laughs> my benefit package is better than this. <laughs> cool. Okay, well, without. Uh, oh, so you can. Uh, Oh, yeah, sorry. Right. I'm not very good at this internet stuff. Right. Oh, so we should have go to the green button. And it just shows a whole screen. It's much better. Yeah, that's important. I do actually have a job for it. We did? Yeah. Perfect. So, um, I'm going to be talking about all of the suboptimal ways we've built UIs in the past yeah. and a better way we think we've found of doing it now. Um, just before I start, I'd just like to have a bit of a disclaimer. Like I wanted to put loads of sound effects and whizzy transitions, but I couldn't figure out how to do it in Open Office. So you've got a pretty good background on your slides there, so that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm a Scala and Ruby developer at a company called Arterx, and essentially what we do, we operate as a sort of consultancy building search products for um, lots of companies, really. And I've been there for quite a while and worked on quite a lot of search wise. Um, so how we used to do it, um, we used to use the Elasticsearch Ruby gem to um, directly from Rails, so it was all combined into one thing. And then we attempt to use um, best practices and design patterns to stop the knowledge of the search spreading across the whole sort of UI layer. And then we would introduce um, sort of a library <coughs> specific to that project to share bits of the search DSL. And then we'd attempt to use metaprogramming to move um, to attempt to avoid having to write lots of repetitive code. Really. Um, so what we didn't like about that approach, essentially, as um, we improved code quality, so as we introduced best practices and design patterns and um, sort of tried to refactor it, the code base was slightly bloated so that the query building was split across, um, you know, 10, 15 classes. And that essentially made it so that it was almost impossible for us to actually look at what the query would be by looking at the code. And so essentially, as the code improved, actually understanding the sort of end result of it just became much harder, and that just became an absolute nightmare to do. And then a big problem with the Elasticsearch Ruby library <coughs> is that it's very slow. Um, it's very easy to drop into your application and start building with it, but it's very hard 
um, it's very hard to make it work fast. And aside from that, the actual building the objects, um, using the DSL to build your query, results in lots of object allocations, and then you convert that into a JSON block, and Ruby's JSON support is sort of slowly improving, but it's still quite slow. And then the sort of real hotspot of it is this class called HashiMash, which converts a dictionary to um, a usable object. So the Elasticsearch Ruby library is very good for building in the first place, but it sort of becomes quite hard to scale it. And then the actual disconnect between working with your query and designing the query actually became, then there was, you had to match your DSL, then match all of the shared objects and helper libraries you've built, which essentially we were building a sort of own cell. The further we went into the project, the less people could actually comfortably work on the project and the less we could paralyze the work. So paralyze, not paralyze. Um, and a problem that's probably quite specific to Arteryx is that the team is, um, we have a quite strong polyglot team. We have Python developers, we have Ruby developers, and we have Scala developers. And because of the approach we were taking to building it, essentially all of the search could only be worked on by the Ruby developers. And lots of the team outside of the Ruby team have quite strong search skills. Um, then another pain of wrapping a sort of big library into the application is that particularly with Tire, because it had no one full-time working on it, it often became a problem where you wanted to upgrade the library, but you know there was a sort of slight disconnect between another dependency that you needed, and then this became even more of a problem because we had a lot of legacy code, and then Tire was written off completely and replaced with the official Elasticsearch Ruby gem. And obviously, working in sort of a consultancy setting, it, having suddenly to spend a lot of time rewriting all of the search code is quite difficult. So what we decided to do instead was use Elasticsearch's search templates feature, which um, it's quite new, it got introduced in 1.2, I think. And then around that, we would just write a very thin client so that the UI didn't have to be tied to Elasticsearch anymore. It just had to use the service we'd written as a third, as a sort of independent JSON API like anything else. Benefits of the new solution. It gave us a very clear separation of concerns. Like all of our search and business logic is tied into the templates and some very small amounts of glue code for managing the templates and setting up parameters. Um, it led us to having cleaner, more maintainable code. So all of the actual search specific code in the project is only about which template we should use, not here's the query we should build and we should use these bits. Then removing a big dependency is always quite nice because you no longer have to worry about keeping it up to date, watching for security updates. And I'm pretty sure the Elasticsearch Ruby gem won't be going anywhere, but it's never a problem we'd have to face again. Then another big advantage is that the queries are very easy to understand because <laughs> essentially it's all there written as it would be if you were sending the JSON directly to Elasticsearch in Sense. It's 
very easy to look at the query and figure it out. Uh, iteration times have improved. Um, so previously, search would become the very sort of long running part of the project that requires a lot of work and a lot of rework. And that becomes a lot easier because you can essentially build the query once, copy paste it, insert um, your mustache tags, and it becomes easier. And through that approach, also if there's any breaking changes in Elasticsearch, they're a lot actually easier to deal with. Um, they are, we can run a quick find and replace because the documentation always makes it quite clear how to upgrade between breaking changes. Another good advantage, because we have a small team, a lot more of the team can actually work on the search part. Um, and lots of non-technical members of the team can look at the search templates and tell us, you know, our QA team can look and try and figure out what's wrong before returning to development. So, which isn't really the case when it's sort of very object heavy Ruby code. Um, and it's fast. This comparison is the first blue bar is the original implementation for a search for one of our client sites written using Elasticsearch <coughs> Ruby with beautifully refactored code. And the second way is the same project, everything's still done in Rails using search templates. I think it worked out to be about a 92% decrease in search time. And I think that's as close to a sort of apples to apples comparison as I could really get. So there are some problems with search templates that um, I'm going to talk through now because <coughs> at points I lost quite a lot of time to some of these and trying to work around them. So hopefully you won't have to. Partial handling in the search layer is horrible. Um, you can't, so there's two ways to have a search template in Elasticsearch. You can have them as files in your Elasticsearch home directory and to update them the whole cluster has to be restarted and using a partial like they're buried somewhere in the config scripts directory and you have to refer to the partial from ES home so we created a pre-compilation step in our deployment process where we just resolve the partials blend it together it's not the most beautiful elegant solution possible, I think, but it seems to be w working quite well now. Like I think the biggest template we have generates something like a 300 kilobyte query. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty large. And Mustache isn't really designed for building JSON. It's more for templating a web page and this becomes a bit of a problem like there's no way to say per, this is an array you just have to tell mustache to just escape um, not escape whatever the tags are and that works pretty well um, so we came up with two ways to work around it we just turn it into a JSON string when we can tell it's um, a list of values rather than a single value or at the bottom and I think I've put that too far down for anyone to actually see um, we can also turn the array into a list of objects and just tag the last one as the last element so we can handle things like commas sometimes you want logic like my initial work with templates I frequently got myself into horrible states because I attempted to make Mustache do things that it's not really designed to. I was essentially trying to bring logic to it. And the way I found 
that was best to work around that is just to calculate your predicates just before you send them to the template request. So for example, A equals cat, haven't built any cat search. That was a contrived example I came up with. Um, deployment and consistency is also slightly a problem. Um, it's hard to actually use the file-based version in production because you have to restart your whole node. All of the templates have to be on every node. And I found quite quickly that a request that's still running on a previous version of the template, when it becomes a new version of the template, sometimes it's missing something. So we use the templates. Uh, there's a special scripts index, and that allows you to store templates, and you can just reference them by name. And we moved all of the actual indexing of the templates to the startup phase of the application. So just every time it sticks a UUID on the end of the name, and then refer refers to that. Um, there's possibly a better way of solving that one, but it sort of works well enough for me to not worry too much about it. <coughs> it's quite a new feature. I don't think it's been used much in production before. Um, at the very beginning, it became quite a few. It contained quite a few bugs. It was very. Um, there was very little documentation out there about it, but. Um, I sort of worked through those because I thought it's such a cool feature and I use this as a sort of great excuse to actually start contributing to Elasticsearch. So yeah, it's a brief summary of my talk. Um, any questions? Have you tried to put logging in your Ruby and see why it's wrong? Um, yes. I, we've considered that, but um, we made flame graphs of the original um, query that took 80, um, 80 milliseconds to run. And essentially, a huge amount of the time was spent in serializing the JSON to a string and then Elasticsearch Ruby converting it into objects on the other end. So that became quite a sort of hard problem for us to solve. Like we could have built our own query DSL and hoped in some way it was faster. But I sort of recognized that this was sort of more of an opportunity for like an order of magnitude improvement rather than a series of marginal gains that take a lot of time. I remember that for similar exercise years ago with uh, we seen queries in XML and XSL. And it was great to actually use a templating language and externalize all the, uh, the query language so people could you know, tweak it in the way that you Yeah. It. Um, do you see a better alternative to mustache for templating in a JSON kind of context? Or... Um, well, I think the sort of logic behind using mustache is that it's so fast. Yeah. And so. It's got no sensitivity at all to the kind of syntax of JSON. No. So maybe a forked version of Mustache that is sensitive to the syntax of JSON. Yeah. But it pretty much arrays are the only issue. I think there's a quite misleading part in the documentation where it uses um, an array, but it only works in an array where you're not matching for all terms, right. which, and it's sort of a bit of an ugly hack to it. Yes? But, uh, two questions. The first one is, can you give us an idea of the kind of search UI as you are building? Um, yeah, so we build sort of quite sort of search focused sites, so we run the Teletext Holidays website, the Daily Mail's travel website, um, quite a lot of sort of search over news 
um, financial news. It's sort of quite. Kind of typing in keywords and finding. Um, yeah, so quite sort of fast and filter heavy, quite keyword heavy. And then my second question is, did you do anything with the return JSON? Um, you talked about trying to abstract away the query DSL from the UI. Did you do anything with the JSON that came back? Um, no, not really. Um, like on our sort of simple wrapper, we added two endpoints that just fetch the first result and fetch all of the results about the rest, but they aren't used in the example in the graph. Um, the main change on the sort of incoming data is just that we wrote very simple Ruby objects to seri um, the deserialize the data itself. So. Anyone else? No? Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. So I'd like to introduce the, uh, the next speaker, which is uh, David Lane, a uh, R&D uh, team lead, is that right? At yep. uh, City Index. Cool. Welcome, David. Thank you. So I'll just uh, I'm set up to do. Hangouts, we could share his slides. Yeah, <coughs> presentation, so I could talk. Yes, okay, so I need to. How do I get to? Uh, I need to send you a link. Okay. <coughs> Can you type your email? Okay. Mm. Is the ad symbol gone? Uh, yeah, it's behind. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Hang on. Oops. com. Okay, brilliant. Just give me a second. Yeah. <laughs> Probably wait, I'll show you satellite photographs. So there's a um, there's a project I bumped into, I don't know if anyone's seen it. It's called planet.com. They are uh, Elasticsearch users, as it turns out. And what they've done is they have sent a bunch of micro satellites up into the low atmosphere, low Earth atmosphere. And uh, they, they plan on having enough in a big line so that they can take a, a, a picture of every spot on the Earth once every 24 hours, like a big line scanner. And then apparently you can search that. So anyway, they have a, a, a plug-in that pulls up a random picture of things every time you open a new tab. So. Okay. And now to go. Yeah. Join. And then I'm doing share screen, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So what are you showing me? Uh, it's on green. Oh. That's quick. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oops. Are we good? Yeah. We're there? All right, all right. Thank you very much for taking half an hour of your time to listen to me talk. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm talking about a project that uh, City Index, the company I work for, uh, recently open sourced. Um, I regret to inform that City Index is not hiring. Uh, but we did, we're still solvent. So, if any of you have watched, so City Index is a, a retail foreign exchange firm, and uh, several of those went out of business last week when the Swiss franc was no longer fixed to the euro, but uh, we didn't. We, uh, we made a little bit of money, actually. Um, but it's, it's been a tough while. Anyway, okay, so. Um, so we've recently open sourced a project which we call Log Search, and Log Search is really uh, what, what, what we call an ELK distribution. So um, if you're interested in running the Elasticsearch ELK stack uh, and you want to do log analysis, um, we've wrapped up what we've learned over the last two years around deploying and running and operating and building applications on top of the Elasticsearch ELK cluster, and, and that's what the Log Search project is. So it's a project uh, for teams who are doing log analysis with Elasticsearch Elk. And um, it helps, there's a lot of DevOps automation. Uh, it helps you build an Elasticsearch cluster. And I stress that um, we've increased the abstraction a bit. We don't talk about processes or servers. We talk about a cluster, and we manage that whole collection of things as a single unit. And I'll get into the details of that uh, shortly. Um, it's really easy for you to get started if you've never used Elasticsearch Elk before and you just want to spin something up on your local laptop and, and see all the, all the moving bits and analyze some of your logs. Um, you can use exactly the same techniques and the same uh, configuration, etc., to then launch a proper uh, production cluster and manage your, your, uh, your production cluster. Um, on any modern cloud, and the one we use is, um, is Amazon Web Services. Um, and there's lots of tooling that we've built around scaling and upgrading and doing disaster recovery. Uh, and then finally, um, if you want to build your own custom log analysis solution on top of the Elasticsearch Elk uh, platform, then we've got some tooling and, and um, what we call add-ons around that, which I'll show later. And uh, the reason I'm doing this talk is that we're hoping that uh, we can um, form a community of people doing similar things 